Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, I would like to show you a possible mistake that you can make uh, when using buttons, uh, in particular when using buttons in conjunction with for loops. Um, we've discussed both buttons and for loops, but we haven't discussed this problem that comes from um, using both of them at the same time. So let's say you have, I'll just get into the code, let's say you have an array uh, and the array we're going to call it $A for array and you want to set the value of the first slot in A to 10 and the second slot in A to 30 and we're going to set the third slot of A to 0. And what you want to do is you want to have a button. You want to display these values and you want to have a button that you can click on it and it'll increase the value of that particular um, slot in the array. So let's have a look at how we might go about doing that. So we have, we're going to be using replace which I've talked about in a previous um, uh, video. The main use of replace, or the use that I've put it to, is that it stops that flickering that you get when you move from one screen to, to another. Um, and that flickering is particularly noticeable when you're making quite a lot of changes, as can happen when you have a button and you're, you're clicking a button. Um, so, because we're going to be using replace, we also need to have this div uh, id equals whole, w-h-o-l-e, and I'll, I'll show you um, what we're doing with replace. But So we have a table, we're going to define a HTML table, and then we're going to have a for loop, which goes from 1 to 2, and in the for loop we have a... Um, a row and then we have a cell in that row and the cell says a such and such is whatever its value is so first it'll say a1 is and the value of a1 which at the start of the program will be will be 10 and then the next time we go through it'll say a2 is is 30 and then we want to have a button, and the button allows us to increase um, the value of the, um, the, the entry in A that, that it's next to. So we have button and then plus. Remember that with buttons, there's two things you need. There's um, the title of the button, the text that's going to appear. And in this case, it's just the character plus. And then if we wanted the button to take us somewhere, which we don't, in this case we don't because we're going to use replace to do that instead, but normally, I guess, more more commonly, you'd click the button and it'll take you somewhere else and you'd have destination, whatever the name of the page is, and in both cases, if you've got a space, you need to have quotation marks. So let's say it was called destination page, we couldn't just write destination page, we'd have to have destination page in quotes so that it knew that both the word destination and the word page and the space in between were, were part of where it was being told to go. And similarly, if we, instead of plus, it was increased by one, we'd have to have that in quotes as well so that it knew that increase and by and one were all part of the text that it's to display on the page. But we're not doing either of those things. We're not having any spaces, so it's just button plus and then we um, we have a slash button down the bottom and within those two we have the code that's going to execute if the user chooses to click the button and the code is that we want to increase the value by one so we just say set dollars a square bracket dollars z n square bracket plus plus and then because we don't want the flickering um, we use replace we could we could just um, have the destination be the page change up here. We could have it 
we can have it like this, but we want to get rid of that flickering because we feel like we're going to be clicking the button a fair bit. So we go replace, quote, hashtag WHOLE, which refers to the, this position in the, in the page, and we have a slash replace, and then within that slash replace, we include change. In other words, we include the page that we're on. And so we're replacing, as far as the computer's concerned, we're sort of replacing part of the page, but that part of the page starts here. It's, it's really the whole page. Um, but, but this, um, as I've discussed before, the replace command sort of fools the computer into, into not doing that flickering um, effect. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is in terms of how it changes the display, but it seems like it doesn't... Um, it doesn't sort of set it to black and print everything again. And so everything looks um, much more clear, I guess, and the program looks a lot more professional. But anyway, this is the main thing. The main thing for the purposes of this, um, what we're trying to do is we want to set $A, $Z++. And then, of course, we end the um, HTML cell. We end the row. And then we have the slash four. And so it'll go through this twice because we've set it up to um, to go through twice. And then we have slash table. And then down here, we just have, we're going to print the value of dollars $A3. Now, there's no real reason to do that. Um, if we assume that the program is going to work, there's no reason to do that. I've just done it to demonstrate um, because this code is wrong. Um, and you'll see, you'll see why I've got this down here in a minute. So let's say we decide, okay, that sounds like it should work. Let's, um, let's run it and see what happens. So we press play. And well, everything looks like what it should look like. We have A1 is 10 and A2 is 30. Well, that's what we said. We've got these two buttons here. They've got plus on them. It's all looking good so far. Unfortunately, when we press A2, well, that doesn't work. It's still 30. And when we press A1, that doesn't work either. It's still, it's still 10. But because we've got a th the value of A3 here, we can see that that's going up instead. And so what have we done wrong? Well, if we thought about it for a while, we would probably realize that the problem is this, the problem is with the value of Z. So let's think about the way the way that for loops work is they start with whatever value you've got here, which in this case is one. They continue as long as this uh, is true. In this case, we've got z is less than or equal to two. And they do this at the end of every execution. In other words, when we get to this slash four, they do whatever whatever is here, which in this case is $Z++, meaning add one to the value of Z. So Z will be one, it'll run through the code, it'll get to the end, it'll add one to Z, making Z two. It'll say, is Z, actually, sorry, it starts by asking, it starts by setting Z to one, and then it asks, is Z less than or equal to two? Yes, one is less than or equal to two. Right, we'll run through that. At the end of it, We'll add one to Z, now Z is two. It'll ask, is Z less than or equal to two? Yes, two is less than or equal to two. So we'll run through it again. It'll get to the end. It'll add one to Z, Z is now three. It'll say, is Z less than or equal to two? No, it's not. Three is not less than or equal to two, it's greater than two. So therefore we've reached a point where we should stop running through this code and we should continue from just below the slash four. So, so it'll continue down here, it'll, it'll um, print the end of the table and the value of A3 and this text and the slash div. But Z is set to three. And let's look, have a look at what we've set our button to do. We've set our button every time it's clicked to set dollars A dollars Z plus plus. In other words, add one to the value to the Z slot in A. But the Z slot in A, by the time we've printed everything on the page, is going to be three. 
And that's not what we wanted. We didn't want it to increase A3. We wanted the first button to increase A1 and the second button to increase A2. So we probably would realize, okay, that's not, um, this isn't going to work. So we might have, we might think, we might say, well, we could have something like this. If A equals 1, set A1 plus plus, else if A equals 2, well, hang on, that's not going to work because Z's still going to be 3. So, so something like that's not going to work. Well, let's say we think about it some more and we think, ah, I know what we need to do. So we go to this second program and I'll show you what we what we do and what we might do instead which is going to be closer but as you can tell from the title of the program of course it's not going to be right either but anyway so we have the div id equals whole we have the table we have the for loop we have the tr this is all the same this is the same but now we have something slightly different instead of printing the button we're assigning all of this code, we're putting all this code into the variable $W and then we're printing $W at the end. So we'll set $W, instead of having this text on the screen, we'll, we'll put that in $W and then we'll put this text in $W and instead of having Z to be part of the text, we'll have whatever the value of Z is in the loop be part of the text. So what I mean by that is the first time it'll go through, it'll add, it'll add this to W. It'll add set dollars A, and then it's a, a square bracket, and then it says plus Z. Okay, well Z is currently one. So it'll add that to the value of W. And so we'll have something like, that and then it says print w and then we'll have the replace and and the slash button etc etc then we have the slash four and then the next time it goes through it'll be exactly the same except it'll say set a2 plus plus and so the the code for the button won't say set the z slot of a it'll say for the first button it'll say set the set slot one increase that by one and the second button it'll say increase that one increase the increase the second uh, slot of a by one. So that's closer to what we want, and we might think that we've got an answer. But let's see what happens when we try and run this program, or when not when we try to. What happens when we do run this program? Uh oh, we're getting these red error messages. And the error is, we can't find a closing tag for macro button. No elements match the selector hole, and the child tag slash button was found outside of a call to its parent macro slash button. In other words, well, this is a bit weird because it's telling us, it's telling us, this is basically telling us, you've got button, but you haven't got slash button. And now this is telling us, well, you've got slash button, but you don't have button. So why isn't it matching up this button to this to the to the slash button because we've got both but it's somehow not matching them up and then when we go through the second time it's doing the same thing well this is a thing that uh twine sometimes does when you sorry i'll zoom back in make it a bit um well, or maybe i won't hang on oops sorry i'm being very clumsy today all right zip in there there we go sorry just pressing the wrong key. So this is what happens when you you have code like this in a in a um, in a variable, and then you print the code. It seems to sort of have trouble relating that code to the code that's immediately after it. Like it prints it okay. It prints the the button but it doesn't seem to be able to connect this button with this button. It seems to sort of immediately go, oh, well, I've printed button and I don't have any slash button. That's an error. I have to have a slash button for every button. And then it goes along 
and sees this slash button and it goes, well, I've got a slash button, but there's no button in the original code. So it's, it's, it's a funny sort of error, but it doesn't seem to, when you've got, when you've got code that is in a, um, in a variable and printed, and then when you've got code that's in the, in the twine file itself, it seems to have trouble matching up um, those two types of code. So we're getting closer, but um, this isn't a, obviously this isn't a solution. So here is what we would actually do. We'll get into the correct, the correct one. It's very similar to the second one, but as you can see, we set W equal to, sorry, we set W equal to the button. We, we add to W set A1++ or A2++, but this code here, instead of, instead of having that as code in the, in the program, instead of having, just having it like that, we also put that in W. So we put the, we, we put the replace, we put the include, we put the slash replace, we put the slash button. So all of this code is in the same variable and then we print w um, and then it's, if this works, then it should be able to match this button with this slash button and Similarly, um, it shouldn't have any problems with the replace and the include and so on. So let's have a look and see what happens. And when we click on the buttons, we can see that yes, A3 isn't moving, so it's recognizing that this is meant to be for A1 and this is meant to be for A2, and it's increasing the right, the right variables, the ones that we want to increase, and so we conclude that we've done it the right way. So that is a um, a bit of a warning if you're using if you're using buttons and if you're using uh, for loops and using for loops where you have a button at, at sort of several points in the loop or, or at every iteration of the loop. Um, if you're manipulating the variable that is governing the loop, so in this case Z is the variable that's sort of deciding how many, you know, uh, how many times to go through the loop. If you if you if you want your button to change the Z slot of something, um, or or add Z to something, or take Z away from something, um, be aware that you're going to have to do it this way. You're going to have to do it by putting everything into a into a variable and then printing that variable, rather than having the code um, sort of as you would normally have it, i.e., just just having the code in the in the program. Because if you do it the latter way, it'll you'll have the wrong uh, value of z. And also, um, you have to do the whole the whole thing into the variable because up, otherwise it has trouble matching up the button with the slash button and the replace with the slash replace and and so on. So I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.